All right, so now I'm going to continue my discussion on Lewis theory by discussing one of the main limitations to Lewis theory. So whenever you uh, use any particular chemical bonding theory, it doesn't matter which one, you, it's a good idea to be aware of the limitations of that particular bonding theory. So one of the main uh, limitations to Lewis theory is that when we represent electrons with dots, um, take HCl for instance, hydrogen chloride, uh, the electrons that are shared between the hydrogen and the chlorine, uh, when we represent them as dots as shown here, the electrons appear to be equally shared between these two atoms. And it turns out that's not true in the case of HCl. And uh, this is actually, um, this has been experimentally determined, uh, it was determined uh, long ago. And the way that they determine this is if you expose hydrogen chloride to an electric field, so on the left there is the negatively charged plate and on the right there there's a positively charged plate. If you turn on these uh, these plates here and you and you create an electric field and you expose a sample of HCl to, to this electric field you see that all of the molecules orient so that the chlorine atom is attracted to the positively charged plate and the hydrogen atoms are all attracted to the negatively charged plate so clearly there is some unequal distribution of electrons that seems to be favoring the chlorine atom given that electrons are negatively charged so we would think that more electron density would mean that uh, that particular atom would be attracted to the positively charged plate while less electron density means it would be attracted to the negatively charged plate. Turns out this is all true. And the way that we represent this is by, well you can do it one of two ways. You can use this little arrow uh, which points to the, more, to the, uh, to the atom that uh, is more electron rich. So um, the, the arrow points to the chlorine, the chlorine is more electron rich and the way that you can uh, remember this is by just saying that the tail of the arrow has like sort of a, it looks like a plus sign. So that the hydrogen has a you know partial positive charge and the chlorine has a partial negative charge. You can also uh, represent this by, you know, a lowercase delta. So delta plus, delta minus, partial positive, partial negative charges. And we say that the bond is polarized towards the chlorine atom. So we've seen that you can, you can show via experiment that th this bond is polarized towards the chlorine and the chlorine hogs up more of the electrons that are shared, more of the electron density that is shared between those two, bond, between those two atoms. So why is this true? Um, why are the electrons distributed unevenly? And the answer comes from a concept called electronegativity. And what electronegativity is, is it's the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. So in the case of hydrogen chloride, uh, we, we say that chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. Remember, because uh, chlorine attracts electrons to itself more. So when you have HCl, the chlorine bears a partial negative charge. The reason is because chlorine is more electronegative than the hydrogen. So a couple of uh, general you know, rules of thumb on electronegativity. Uh, first of all, electronegativity increases across a period in the periodic table. So if you go from left to right across a row in the periodic table, so here, for instance, if you go from boron to carbon to nitrogen, the electronegativities are increasing as you go from left to right. So nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, which is more electronegative than boron. Electronegativity decreases down a group in the periodic table. So uh, I've drawn the halogens here. So fluorine, that's at the top of the group. That is the most electronegative among the halogens, followed by chlorine, followed by bromine, and then lastly, iodine. So we've seen that uh, the more electronegative atom is going to be the one that hogs up the electron density. And in other words, the bond is polarized towards the more electronegative atom. And depending on the atoms that you, uh, that you have bonded together, um, the degree of polarity in any particular bond depends on the difference in electronegativity, which we call delta En, between the two bonded atoms. 
so basically what's going on is we have this continuum of bond polarity. And within this continuum, we have three uh, broadly classified groups that we call pure covalent, polar covalent, and ionic. In a pure covalent bond, the two atoms that are bonded together are, are identical. So a bond between a hydrogen and another hydrogen, that would be a pure covalent bond. There's no difference in electronegativity because they are virtually identical atoms. Same thing with uh, O2, N2, F2, Cl2, and the like. We have uh, ionic, bond, ionic bonding, which occurs on the... Um, on the larger end of the uh, of the bond polarity continuum, and when you have ionic bonding, you you basically have a very large uh, electronegativity difference. So, ionic bonding generally occurs between metals and nonmetals, and if you look at where the, the metals are and where the nonmetals are, they're usually pretty far apart from each other on the periodic table. There's a large electronegativity difference, so that means that there's going to be an ionic bond. So. Uh, the electron is essentially going to be uh, transferred from the metal to the nonmetal. So that occurs on the uh, on the large extreme of the bond polarity continuum. Everything else in between is classified as polar covalent. You have a moderate electronegativity difference between two nonmetals. So uh, the bond between an oxygen and a hydrogen, uh, the bond between a hydrogen and a chlorine. Uh, the bond, indeed, the bond between any two nonmetals uh, that are different, any two heteronuclear nonmetals. We're going to call that uh, polar covalent. So, in a later video, I'm going to show uh, how you can quantify the differences, or excuse me, how you can how you can quantify the extent of bond polarity. So. In this, you know, in this here, we've just classified it into three, you know, broad groups. But in, in the next video, I'm going to show how we actually quantify the extent of bond polarity um, in a chemical bond or in an entire molecule. So, all right, have a good one.